Welcome to Glass Half Dead and how to play Kill Team. This video will take you through each phase of the game and show you the actions you can take and the effects that they will have at every step of the way. You're going to see charging, shooting, combat, morale, invulnerable saves, field no pain saves, cover and long range modifiers and how flesh wounds affect models and how multi-shot and multi-damage weapons interact with the injury roll and all of the different weapon types. By the end of this video, you will be able to play your first game of Kill Team and get all of the basic rules right. I'm not going to be going into the advanced rules, that will come later, and in fact I've already made a few videos on those that I've linked in the description below. If you're looking for specific rules, check the timestamps below. I do go over all of the rules multiple times, but that's just the first time for those of you in a hurry. Once you've finished watching this video, if you post a comment letting me know any questions you have about rules I haven't talked about here, or questions you still have, if enough people say the same thing, then I will try my best to include that in my follow-up videos where I go into the more advanced rules. But first, we start with the basics. Kill Team is a skirmish level game with each side comprising between 3 and 20 models, decided by the points level you wish to play at. A good rule of thumb is that if you're playing with just the core book, you play 100 point games. If you're playing with elites, bump that up to 125 and commanders goes all the way up to 200. At the moment, competitive games are played at 125 points, but as those are all community driven tournament packs, it could change in the future. Regardless, starting at 100 is a safe bet for learning the game. How you win the game is dependent on the mission itself. Some require you to hold the most objectives, some need you to kill the most, some need you to destroy a building or run off the far side of the board. Now, Kill Team shares a lot in common with Big 40k. For example, all of the data sheets used are the same. This is great because if you know your models in Big 40k, then you know them in Kill Team. And likewise, if you're using Kill Team to get started in Warhammer, then their rules in Kill Team will be the same when you progress into Big 40k, making Kill Team a brilliant way to test the waters of a new faction before you commit. With that said, there are some big differences between Kill Team and 40k, and they are 100% separate rule sets. Just because one ruling applies to one game doesn't mean it applies to the other. The biggest difference, and the aspect that makes Kill Team superior to 40k in my opinion, is how the phases work. Kill Team has a more modern design in the sense that you never have nothing to do. In Big 40k, it's entirely possible to walk away from the table for half an hour. In Kill Team, you alternate model activations making everything more interactive, impactful and fun. And that's the introduction finished. Instead of giving you more theory, let's start playing a game. I've arranged a nice little training battle for you with plenty of spectators. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share for the Omnisire. On the left we have the Adeptus Mechanicus. The leader of our cogboys is a Skatari Vanguard Alpha with an Arc Maul and Phosphor Pistol. Next to him is the immensely scary Rustwalker Princeps who is a combat specialist. Behind them there are two more specialists, a sniper with a deadly plasma caliber and a Skatari vanguard with a radium carbine and ore specs who is a comm specialist. Above all of them is a fulgurite priest, the most resilient of the admech models with an invulnerable save and a feel no pain save. On the right we have the Astra Militarum or as you may know them, the Imperial Guard. And it's an all scion list, these really are the best of the best. As long as we're ignoring space marines and Chaos, and Xenos. Best of the best, I tell you, honestly. Leading our elite humans is a Tempesta with Hotshot Las Pistol and Devastating Power Fist. We then have a Sniper with Multi Melter, a Demolition Specialist with Hotshot Volley Gun, and a Comms with Flamer. The non-specialist on the building has a Hotshot Las Gun. To start the battle, we roll for initiative and the Adeptus Mechanicus win it, meaning they will go first. In the movement phase, you can move, advance, or ready. You can also react to a charge or fall back if you start in combat. The movement phase is unique in Kill Team as it's the only phase where a player will activate all of their models instead of alternating with their opponent. The Admech decide to start things off with a bang and have their leader charge the enemy leader. Measuring the distance we see that he's 5.5 inches away from the enemy and he has to get within 1 inch to count as being in combat. So he needs to roll a 5 on 2d6. But before we roll to see how far he can charge, the opponent gets to react. He can either retreat, which is a 3 inch move ending further away from the charging model, or he can fire overwatch, which allows the enemy to use their weapon, but they can only hit on a 6. Now the Tempesta only has a pistol, which is a single shot, so it's not great for overwatch. But he also has a power fist and really does kind of want to be in combat. 
so he fires Overwatch and doesn't roll a 6. With the reaction finished, the Admech leader rolls his charge roll of 2d6 and it's easy over the 5 inches he needed to reach the enemy. Continuing the explosive start, the combat specialist Rustorker Princeps has clearly activated his suicide chip and is going to charge the Flamer. We go through the same sequence as before. We measure the distance and he needs a 7. The Scion gets to react. He has a Flamer which has two special abilities that you'll see in a lot of games. It shoots d6 shots and it automatically hits. This means it doesn't matter that in Overwatch you need 6s to hit because it automatically hits. As it has d6 shots, we roll a single die and he's rolled a 6. Bad news for the Rust Orca Princeps, obviously. This means 6 shots have hit and we now roll the wound roll. A Flamer is strength 4 whilst the Rust Orca is toughness 3. That means the Scion will wound on a 3+, plus, as the strength is greater than the toughness. He rolls a devastating 6 wounds. The Rust Orca has a save of 4+, plus and manages to save no wounds. The Rust Stalker is a 2 wound model but has taken 6 wounds. This means that the model is reduced to 0 wounds remaining. Whenever that happens in the game, we look at the damage value of the weapon. In this case, the Flamer has a damage of 1. That means we roll a single die to decide the fate of our Rust Stalker. Typically, on the roll of a 4+, plus, the model is taken out of action and on the roll of a 3 or less, the model will receive a flesh wound, which means he stays in the game but takes a penalty to hit rolls. However, the Rust Stalker is within one inch of terrain that is between himself and the shooter, which means the Scion will only remove the Rust Stalker on a 5 or 6. The Scion fails the injury roll and the Rust Stalker receives a flesh wound, but can now roll his 2d6 charge. He rolls under a 7 and so fails the charge. He can either move the full distance and get as close as possible to the enemy, or can stand still. He chooses to stand still, remaining in cover for more survivability. A third charge from the priest at the back. We check the range and decide it's an easy one. The enemy chooses to fire overwatch. He needs a 6 to hit with his multi-melter and he gets it. This is an ultra strong weapon and will wound on a 2, which it does. Now this weapon has an AP value. AP means armor penetration, so whatever the value of the weapon's AP is removed from the defending model's armor save. So if the multi-melter shot a regular model with an armor save of 3+, plus, then you apply the minus 4 AP, and that model then needs to roll a 7, which of course isn't possible on a d6 dice. But the priest has a special save called an invulnerable save, which ignores the AP value of a weapon. He needs a 5, but fails it, allowing the single shot to get to the injury roll. The multi melter has a special rule that when it wounds a model within half range, you can roll 2d6 for the damage value of the weapon and pick the highest. The highest roll is a 3, so the damage value of the weapon becomes 3. Now the priest has a secondary save, commonly referred to as a feel no pain save or FNP. This save allows you to roll 1d6 for every damage your model takes. On the roll of a 5 plus, the damage fails and the priest's wound is not lost. The priest saves 2 of the damage, but 1 damage gets through. This 1 damage reduces the priest to 0 wounds. The same as last time, we take the damage value of the weapon, which is now 3 because that's the value we rolled, and we roll 3 dice, needing to roll a 5 plus on any of the dice to kill the priest as he gets the benefit of cover. The Scion doesn't roll the 5 plus he needs, and so the priest receives a single flesh wound instead. You see, the injury dice are not cumulative. They are just increasing the chance of rolling what you need, but it still has to happen on a single die from your roll. And remember, the number of injury dice rolled is always equal to the damage characteristic of the weapon, no matter if any of the shots are saved. The priest, having survived Overwatch, can now roll his charge, which easily allows him to get within one inch of the Scion. Moving to the Admech's final two models, the Vanguard with all specs can't quite move around the other to reach exactly where he wants, so chooses to advance. He has a weapon that is type Assault, and although advancing normally means you then won't be able to shoot in the shooting phase, because it's an Assault weapon, he will just be at a minus one to hit. The Sniper with Plasma Caliber chooses to Ready, which will allow him to fire first in the shooting phase. With all the Admech moved and their tokens placed so we can remember what they did, we move over to the Astro Militarum. 
Models that were successfully charged are unable to make any movement on the turn they have been successfully charged, so we can ignore them for now. The Flamer has a great target as the enemy has finished their move within 2 inches of each other and so the Flamer will be able to hit both with a single shot. He chooses to ready. The Demo Specialist decides he doesn't like how scary the Priest is looking and knows he can't do anything in combat against the Priest, so moves away, picking better targets for the shooting phase. He has a weapon with the type of Heavy and since he has moved will now be at minus 1 to hit. The final Scion, up on the building, checks range against his intended targets and decides he's too far away. Just like the Scion before him, he makes a normal move forwards, but because his weapon type is Rapid Fire, he will not be taking a minus one to hit in the shooting phase from moving. With every model moved, we progress to the next phase, the Psychic phase. In the base game, only the Grey Knights, Thousand Sons and Servants of the Abyss have a model with the Psychic keyword. So there's nothing for our Admech and Astro Militarum to worry about here, so we progress to the shooting phase. Now we start to alternate our activations, and this is where some of the real nuances of Kill Team come into play. All readied models have the chance to shoot before any non-readied models. Both sides have a single readied model, the Plasma Caliber for the Admech and the Flamer for the Militarum. As they are both readied and eligible to shoot, we go with the initiative order, which means the Admech Sniper with Plasma Caliber shoots first. Seeing how dangerous the enemy Flamer is in this position, he chooses the Flamer as the target. The Flamer is over half range of the 18 inch assault weapon and is also obscured. When a target is over half of the weapon's range, there is a minus one modifier to the hit roll. We can tell he's obscured because any part of the firing model cannot see every part of the target. If the sniper were to fire at the scion on the roof who moved forwards to the edge of the roof, we can see that the sniper can see every part of the model, so would be unobscured. If the roof scion had stayed a bit further back, then he would have hidden his feet from the sniper, but he hasn't. Still, the sniper is going to shoot the more dangerous flamer. However, the plasma is within 3 inches of the comm specialist with all specs, and so the comm specialist will grant both his innate comms ability and his all specs ability to the sniper. The comms ability gives him a plus one to the hit roll and his all specs removes any negative modifiers from obscurity. So he naturally hits on a three plus, but is at minus two for being long range and obscured. The all specs removes the obscurity and the comms gives him a plus one, leaving him back at his original ballistic skill of three plus. This is an assault two weapon that has two profiles. Before rolling the hit roll, the admec must decide which profile to use. The regular shot or the overcharged shot. He decides to go with the overcharge shot so that he can roll 2 damage on the injury roll. The negative here is that if he rolls a 1 to hit, he is removed from the board. He rolls both shots at once because the fast rolling rule allows that. However, when using overcharge plasma, it's recommended that you roll them one at a time to lessen the likelihood of rolling ones. The sniper has rolled a hit and a 1. Luckily, he's a sniper specialist, which means he can re-roll any ones he rolls. Unfortunately, he rolls another one, and you can never re-roll a re-roll for any reason. This means that the model will be removed from the board once the other shot has been played out. It's a strength 8 weapon against a toughness 3 model. As the strength is double the toughness, it will wound on a 2 plus. He easily wounds. The AP of the weapon is minus 3. The Scion save is a 4 plus, and when given minus 3 becomes a 7 plus, which cannot be saved on a single d6, so no save roll is made. We go straight to the injury roll with a damage of 2. The Scion is behind cover so there will be a minus 1 modifier to the injury roll, meaning on 2 dice, one of them will need to roll a 5 plus. The roll fails, but there is a very popular tactic you have to know. It's called a tactical re-roll, which allows you to re-roll any single roll. Let's be clear, not a single dice, but a single roll. In this case, as the injury roll is two dice, we get to re-roll both for one CP. We re-roll and one of the die is a five plus, which removes the Scion from play, along with the Plasma who blew himself up. As there are no more readied models, we go to the regular part of the shooting phase, which means the Admech get the first shot. That's right, if you take initiative and the enemy has no readied models but you do, you'll get to make two shots in a row, one with an unreadied model. As there are only two models left to shoot, the comms specialist will shoot the closer Scion as he has a more powerful gun. 
The Scion is within half, but is obscured. The Auspex and Comms ability can only be used once per round, and neither can be used on the model with those abilities, only those around them. Normally hitting on threes, the minus one means that he will need a four plus to hit because of the obscurity. Except he also advanced in the movement phase, which means an additional minus one, so he will need fives. He hits with one shot. There's no AP, so the Scion gets his regular four plus save and makes it. The attack ends and the Militarum get to make their first regular shot. As the Admech have no more shooting, the order of these shots doesn't really matter. The Hotshot Volleygun, when picking his targets, will choose to split his shots. First, you must pick a primary target, then you can choose to shoot any other model that is within two inches of that primary target and is still eligible to be shot, so must be visible and within range. Picking the Rust Stalker as the target, he checks to make sure the Vanguard is within two inches, and they are. The Hotshot Volleygun is a heavy four weapon, which means it gets four shots, and so the Scion will split his shots two and two. Both of the targets are obscured, so he's at minus one to hit, but the gun is also a heavy and he moved, so he's actually at minus two to hit, so he's needing a five plus. He shoots into the Vanguard first and misses with both. He shoots into the Rust Stalker and hits with both. It's strength four to toughness three. As the strength is greater, he needs a three to wound and makes it with one of the shots. The AP is minus two, which takes the Rust Stalker to a six plus save, which he fails. The damage characteristic of the Hotshot Volleygun is one, so the injury roll will be a single die. Now remember, normally the enemy will be taken out of action on a four or more. However, the Rust Stalker is within one inch of intervening terrain, so there is a minus one modifier, meaning the Scion will need a five plus, except this time the Rust Stalker also has a flesh wound, which means there is also a plus one applied to the roll, taking it back to a four plus. The Scion rolls above a four and the Rust Stalker is removed from the board. It would now be the Admex turn to shoot, but they have no more models to shoot with, so the final Scion will take the only shot he can. You cannot shoot at models within one inch of enemy models, so the only eligible target is the Vanguard. They're at long range and obscured. The Scion has a rapid fire one weapon. This means that if the target was within half range of the Scion, he would double the number of shots he could fire. In this case, allowing him to fire two dice instead of one. But the Vanguard is over half range and obscured, so he will need a five plus on one dice, which he doesn't get. Now both of the leaders have pistols, but neither can shoot this turn. You cannot shoot a pistol on the turn you charged or were charged. And pistols are the only weapons that can be fired when you're within one inch of an enemy model. And that's the end of the shooting phase, and we go into the combat phase. Much like the shooting phase where all readied models shoot first before alternating begins, in the combat phase, all models that have charged get to attack before any others. As only the Admech models have charged, they will both be able to attack before the Militarum. We start with the Admech leader who has an Arc Power Maul. He's got two attacks and hits on fours, which he does. He's normally strength three, but the Power Maul gives him plus two, making him strength five. As the strength is higher than the Scion's toughness of three, but isn't double, he will be wounding on threes. He wounds with one and has an AP of minus one, taking the Scion's save of four plus to a five plus, but he makes it and the attack ends. Over to the second model that charged, it's the full right priest. Two attacks hitting on threes, but minus one because he has a flesh wound. He makes both. The AP is minus two, meaning the Scion needs a six plus to save and he fails both. The damage characteristic of the weapon is two, so we roll two dice on the injury roll, needing a four plus to remove the Scion. It's a success and the priest is free to make a consolidation move. This means he can move up to three inches towards the closest enemy model. It gets him to within one inch of that model. Now the priest can't attack again, and the Scion will now get to attack the priest, but it's a strong tactical move, as otherwise the priest would have had to face Overwatch in the next turn. The Scion leader makes his attack against the Admech leader. He gets two attacks and would normally hit on a four plus, but because he's got a power fist, he's hitting on a five plus. He rolls two dice and gets one success. He's normally strength three, but the power fist doubles his strength to strength six. The Admech leader is toughness three, and since six is double three, the Scion will be wounding on a two plus. He makes it. With a normal armor save of a four plus, the AP minus three of the power fist would take him to needing a seven, which can't be done, of course. However, the Vanguard 
actually has an invulnerable save of a 6 plus, so he still gets to make a save, but he fails it. The Power Fist is d3 damage, so we roll 1d6 and half the number. We roll a 5, so the damage of the Power Fist is 3. This means for the injury roll, we roll 3 dice, needing a 4 or more to kill, and we get it. The Admech Leader is removed from combat. The Scion that the Priest consolidated into is now eligible to fight and gets a single attack, needing a 4 plus to hit, but misses. Now that concludes the combat phase, taking us into the final phase, morale. Here we find out which team will break and which models will shake. We start with initiative, so the Admech go first. The first thing to do is count up all of the models removed from combat and all of the models with a flesh wound. If that number is over half of the number of your starting models, you need to take a break test. The Admech have lost 3 models and have 1 flesh wound on the board. They started with 6 models, so they have lost over half their team. A break test is simple. On 2d6, you need to roll the same or less than your highest leadership value on the board. The Priest has a leadership of 8, so on 2d6 we need to roll an 8 or less. They roll under their leadership and so do not break. The next step of the morale phase is to take shaken tests. For that, we need to roll a single d6 tested against that model's leadership. For every model that has been taken out of action, in this case, that's 3, there is a minus 1 to the model's leadership. So 8 minus 3 is 5. On 1d6, we need to roll equal to or less than the model's leadership. The priest will only fail on a 6, which we don't roll, so the priest is not shaken. Moving to the Astra Militarum, they have lost 3 of the 5 models they started with. The highest leadership is a 7 from the Tempesta, and they roll under it, so they don't break. They also do not have any flesh wounds on the board, so do not need to take any shaken tests. And there you go, that is one round of Kill Team, and that is how the basic game of Kill Team is played. I really did try to make this as short and basic as I could, while still covering as much as possible. I tried to go over concepts multiple times, but I know that if you're not able to pay 100% attention, you might still come away with some of the tricky rules not making sense, but I assure you that if you go back and listen carefully, I have made sure to explain why modifiers might be applied and exactly how the rule is played, which in turn you can extrapolate to other situations when the rulebook isn't quite making sense. I hope you found this useful, and if you could drop a like and a comment, and don't forget to share it with others that are needing a bit of Kill Team help, that would be great. Also, let me know which rules you would like to see covered in a more advanced how to play guide. This has been Glass Half Dead, and I hope you've had a good day, and continue to have a good day. Goodbye. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share for the Omnisire.